In today's video, we're going to take a look at the United Arab Emirates. There it is, highlighted on the map. See what's been happening there recently. So there's a lovely picture there of a very, very large skyscraper and a beautiful nightscape. So here's the location map, Saudi Arabia to the south and Oman to the east and the Persian Gulf to the north. In more detail, here are the seven emirates. We've got uh, Abu Dhabi, Dubai, Sharjah, Fujairah, Ajman, Ras Al Khaimah and Umm Al Quwain. Well, you've probably heard of ADNOC, the Abu Dhabi National Oil Company. You're probably aware that they are a large oil company. They are, in fact, the 16th largest in the world, based on market capitalization. And that data from companiesmarketcap.com. Another UAE company that makes an appearance is TACA. They're the 10th largest oil company in the world, according to this listing. TACA, of course, are the Abu Dhabi National Energy Company. And uh, a quick look shows that, uh, yeah, there are collaborative ventures between Adnoc and Taka in the region. So uh, let's have a look at the map. Up in the northwest corner here, you can see the mighty north field. We've done a video on that. One of our most popular videos, the largest gas field in the world. But there are many other fields here. Many have uh, gas caps and some are indeed gas fields. Both uh, onshore and offshore, there are fields. Some of the big ones, well, we'll come to the names on the next slide. Pause the video and have a look at this map. We've got the uh, the fields actually outlined here. Now, Zakum, which is highlighted there, is the biggest oil field in the UAE. And it's the fourth largest oil field on the planet, both an upper and lower Zakum. So if we have a quick look at uh, global oil production and we see there's the Middle East highlighted in green. And if we zoom in on the Middle East portion from that last slide, in green, here's the United Arab Emirates at the top. Obviously, Saudi Arabia, the biggest producer in the region, but there's the UAE, similar to Iran and Iraq in terms, and Kuwait for that matter, similar sized production. On its own, here's UAE oil production from 1965 right through to 2022. There's been a general increase in production levels, currently doing around about 4 million barrels of oil per day. Now, if we look at the, uh, the context for oil, uh, we can have a look at the uh, production versus consumption. Consumption in yellow, production in green. There's an excess of produced oil, which of course is available for export, and UAE is a major exporter of oil. If we come on to gas, and again look at the Middle East in the, in the overall um, world gas production profile, you can see it's the red. Highlighted in this slide, you can see the contribution from the United Arab Emirates in red. The big gas producing areas, Iran, Qatar and Saudi Arabia. We've probably seen in the past videos, we've had Cooper's bloopers. But uh, today I'm going to point out Ben's bloopers. Not sure that Vietnam actually goes in here. Oh, revenge. It's sweet. So looking at UAE gas production on its own, it's ramped up from the 70s through the 80s up into the uh, 2010s. It seems to have kind of plateaued out in the last decade or so at around about five BCF of gas a day. Looking at production and consumption of gas in the United Arab Emirates, in 2007, the UAE started to consume more gas than it produced. I guess there's uh, lots of air conditioners and uh, golf courses that have, have got to uh, have their the water pumps on. It is hoped, and there's a plan, that this may be changed, that by 2030, UAE is targeting to be a, a gas exporter. So if we look at the news that's been happening in the last few months in UAE, now let's start by talking about the BAB field. You can see in the cross section here, here is BAB, multiple reservoirs, both containing oil, oil and gas, and just gas on its own, deeper down. The age of the reservoirs, well, there's Shueba, right down into the Hith Arab and basically Cretaceous and Jurassic reservoirs, predominantly carbonate reservoirs. The field was discovered back in 1954, and it's a large structural closure, huge anticline. Operated by Adnoc, it's actually located onshore, the UAE. Now this is our trove entry for it. You can see we've got a huge amount of information on this field. If you get trove, you get all this information and you get it for just about every field in the Middle East and beyond. So the news here is the feed has been awarded for the development of the BAB gas cap. You saw on the last slide that uh, extensive gas caps here. Feed standing for front end engineering and design. This is the Ruiz LNG project, and it's uh, one of the, the, the first LNG export facilities in the Middle East, North Africa region to run on clean power. It'll produce 9.6 million tonnes of LNG per year, providing access to reliable and affordable energy. 
the feed was awarded on the 4th of December 2024 to Wally Engineering, who uh, Wally are uh, an Australian headquartered company. They've got operations worldwide. So the BAB gas cap project, also known as the BGC project, plans to add over 1.8 billion cubic feet per day of gas processing capacity. Now that's an increase of about 20% for the BAB field. It's in line with the operator's plan to achieve an overall gas capacity of some 13.2 billion cubic feet of gas per day by 2029. And there it is shown on the red line. That's more than double to what was being produced back in 2022. So a significant add. So we've had a look at the onshore BAB field. Now if we take a look at other expansion projects that are ongoing, uh, Adnox seeking to achieve more than uh, self-sufficiency by 2030. The offshore Umshea field is another major project. With the rich gas development, it's enhanced production in a number of fields, which we'll show on the next slide. It's targeting conventional gas, sour gas, and unconventional gas. So you can see the location there of Umshea. Here's some details of the rich gas development. Uh, it's going to be add 1.5 billion standard cubic feet of gas per day. It's going to support Adnox production increase of 5 million barrels of oil per day. The capex likely to be in excess of $4 billion, and it's going to contribute to Adnox downstream development. There's the timeline a map showing some of the fields involved in the uh, rich gas development and uh, the scope of the project there. Ruiz LNG, um, again, it's going to be adding 9.6 million tonnes per annum of LNG. It's uh, the first low carbon run LNG export facility in the Middle East and North Africa. 70% of production capacity is secured through sales commi commitments already. It's going to be of the order of about $5 billion of CapEx. World leading partners, there they are listed, Shell, BP, Mitsui and Total Energies. And it's to be acquired from Adnoc at cost upon completion. Now check out our, our recent video on LNG, but uh, here we're looking at LPG and naphtha deficit. Again, you're seeing an excess in the, uh, the Middle East, looking to supply areas like uh, Asia Pacific. Now, Adnoc has uh, not just been busy domestically in the international scene. Adnoc's been out in the US purchasing chemical plants and LNG export facilities. They're looking now to uh, buy some gas fields to actually complement the, the plants that they have. Now, if we look at some of the trove entries for this region, here's uh, Abu al Bakush, Asab, Belbazem, Buhasa, Hale, Mubaraz. Just a, a few examples there. Oh, and for good measure, we talked about Zakam. Awful lot of information here within Trove. Get in touch if you want to know what's going on. Now, here's a, a quick look at uh, the UAE, and this is from our Trove database, our dashboard. You can see we've got some 70 fields and 44 uh, discoveries and a few other assets in there. Uh, they're all sort of within the UAE, though one uh, straddles the, the border with Qatar. In terms of fluid type, well, the majority is oil, but we've got gas and we've got various combinations. It's kind of a, a split between oil onshore and offshore. Fields have been discovered right throughout uh, the last few decades. The ages, typically predominantly Cretaceous and Jurassic. You can actually see the fields listed or highlighted in dark blue at the bottom there. So a quick look at the geology, and this is really only in the northern end in the Ras al Khaimah region of the UAE. It comes from rat gas. In the thrust belt, you can see we've got uh, Jurassic, Triassic, and some Cretaceous proven plays here. Also the Permian, the, the sort of Kuf equivalent. In the uh, offshore region, well, we've seen examples from uh, Iran where we've got basically tertiary reefs and uh, Paleogene stratigraphic plays, uh, but not as yet proven in the UAE region. The more typical area here on the, on the shelf or the, the platform play, we've got plays in the, the Wasir, the Thamama, uh, within the Jurassic Triassic and within the Permian. A carbonate geologist's heaven. So to conclude, the UAE is a major oil and gas player, historically more significant for, for oil production, but uh, there seems to be great scope for not just self-sufficiency, but potentially export by 2030 if some of the projects deliver. So the ADNOC projects, they've been aligned to meet that goal with uh, the, the BAB and uh, rich gas development. LNG facilities uh, are being built and upgraded, and there's much more to come. We'll look back in a few months' time and see what's been happening in the UAE. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope to see you back on our channel for too long. Bye for now.
Do remember, subscribe, ring the bell, give us a thumbs up, find more information on our website, or just drop us an email. We'll get back in touch, give you a quote. You'll see how easy and how cost-effective it is to find out about every single oil field and gas field and discovery in the world via Trove.